Now, here's another question for you. Speaking of those new style of O2 sensors, sometimes called wide range, sometimes called air fuel sensors, but regardless, they're not a switching sensor, which is either saying rich or lean, it doesn't really tell you how rich or lean it is, but those have been the O2 sensors since the 1980s, and they're still used behind catalytic converters, but most cars have switched, not all, but most cars have switched to a different type of sensor. In the video, you saw a PID value for the pre-CAT sensors for oxygen. What did those sensors do? Here's the question. An O2 sensor of the air fuel sensor variety, the PID is fluctuating between a very low positive and a very low negative current value. Very little movements of current, positive and negative. What is most likely going on? A, the sensor is internally shorted to the heating element. B, the sensor is in a diagnostic mode for the heater. C, the PCM's 5 volt reference is bleeding over into the O2. Or D, the sensor is a wide range air fuel sensor that is working to specifications. Make your selection now. I've got the results, Dave. 0% chose A, 0% chose B, 9% chose C, and a whopping 91% on D. The 91s, you have it. That is the exact answer I'm looking for. Now, you know that you saw in that hands-on demonstration, and if you've had your scanner on newer cars with the wide range and the air fuel type sensors, they are a, a much more integral, or I should say, um, complex sensor. Basically how they work is they work opposite of a conventional O2 sensor. Not only are they more accurate over a wider range, hence the term, the title, but they are also more accurate. The greater range, greater accuracy. Here's how they work. Now, just I want you to look at my hand here, level with the Delphi logo on my shirt. We're going to call that 14.7 to 1, stoichiometric. And you know if that number goes lower, the 14.7 being the air, one pound of 14.7 pounds of air to one pound of fuel. If it goes lower than 14.7, let's say 12 to 1, 11 to 1, that's a rich mixture, a lot less air, for that one pound of fuel. But if it goes higher than stoic, higher than my label here, if it goes 16, 17, 18 to one, that's a leaner mixture. So we need to add more fuel to compensate if it goes lean. Normally an O2 sensor when you're lean is gonna be a low voltage, high air fuel ratio, higher than 14.7, 16 to one for example, low O2 voltage. Think the opposite with these air fuel and wideband sensors, either measuring in a voltage between two and a half and three and a half volts or so, or a current, very small current, 20 milliamps typically of movement. The number of amps, milliamps, positive or negative, will go with the air fuel ratio. So at 14.7 to one, which by the way, is also lambda the perfect one lambda, 14.7 to one. When you're at one lambda, 14.7 to one, the voltage on some cars and PIDs, you look at the wide type band sensors, will go a little higher from to say 3.3 to 3.6 as the air fuel ratio goes higher, meaning leaner. So it goes right with the air fuel ratio, as does lambda, 14.7, one lambda. Below 14.7, richer, below one lambda let's say 0.9, and you saw the Explorer, when I put the propane in, it went down a few times to 0.9 as that fuel trim made adjustments before it actually had a chance to make adjustments. And when we started going lean, we saw we went stoic, and the current in the case of the, of the Explorer didn't change much, but out in the real world, in the road tests, without the delays, we would see the current go positive in a higher number of millivolts, when the ratio went higher, leaner. So air fuel ratio, 14.7, 16, 12, and lambda, 1, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, or 1.1, 1.2, or the voltage of an O2, or the current of the new style O2s go with the air fuel. Hope that little analogy with the hands helps you keep it in really good long-term memory, no pun intended. So when you look at these PIDs, ba-bing, you know what's going on as you drive that car or run it in the shop at idle.